it wrote the file into the sandbox and now it's going to upload that file to the Anthropic API, but it's using the attacker's API key because that was part of the prompt injection attack. And so now if the attacker in their own account is refreshing the pane, you can see it actually uploaded a file. Hello. This is going to be interesting uh, video about the network access feature that was added to Claude and how in the default configuration, we can actually exfiltrate data with prompt injection. This is going to show a very interesting vulnerability or a trick. So I'm kind of excited to share that. And I called it the prompt injections revenge. And the reason for that is that just yesterday I was at a national geographic talk about the life of pirates. And there was a lot of discussion around Captain Blackbeard's ship, which was called the Queen Anne's Revenge. And so that's sort of how I called this the prompt injections revenge. Let's go into it. So this is about Anthropic Claude and about data exfiltration, which is an interesting new technique that you will see. The very first thing to know is there's the way you configure the network egress, so the outbound network connectivity of code interpreter. There's the option to have it entirely off. Uh, if you enable it, the default is actually a package managers only configuration, which is what we are going to explore in more detail. Then you can like customize it a little bit and there's also the way to have full network access, right? Which is extremely dangerous. But I want to show you that even allowing package managers only, the package managers only configuration actually has quite a lot of risk involved. And so here you can see the UI where it's enabled and here you can actually disable and turn it off entirely. And so when I looked at this, my first question was, so what is actually the default allow list? And Anthropic actually calls it approved network domains. And you can see here there's Anthropic services explicit and then GitHub, NPM, Yarn, like a couple of package managers, right? So when I saw this, I was like, hang on, wait a minute. Did, was that just like Anthropic services allow listed entirely? That's sort of an interesting scenario, right? Uh, why do I actually say that? Because if you can run code interpreter code, right, you could call out to the Anthropic APIs, meaning you can invoke, you know, a chat, you can create a chat conversation with Claude uh, and so on, or upload files, right? There's a file upload feature in the API. And so that's what I was like wondering, uh, if you build a prompt injection exploit, and I call this now offensive context engineering, if you haven't heard that term, I thought that's like an interesting way to kind of, you know, highlight a bit more the complexity involved. You can build an indirect prompt injection that reads private data of the user, right? It performs a tool call. And what I'm using specifically here is actually calling that memory tool, sort of a new feature that uh, was also added to Claude very recently, where you can search through all your chat history and then, you know, load certain past conversations into the chat context. So we will do that as part of the demo. I'm going to load the previous chat conversation we had entirely. Then we store it into a file in Code Interpreter. And then we're going to use the Anthropic API, right? We're going to write Python code to upload that file to uh, the Anthropic account. But there's a twist to it, right? And the twist is we're going to overwrite the API key that is being used, and we're going to provide as part of a prompt injection payload, right? We're going to provide the attacker's API key, meaning we're going to write to the attacker's anthropic account, and this leads to the data exfiltration. And so here you can see how this actually looks in real code. This is not the code that the prompt injection exactly used that I uh, did because Claude would refuse this exact code. It would actually not work, so I had to do some trickery. What is so important here is first, right, you can see here the claw client.beta.files.upload where you reference the file in the code interpreter that you want to upload. But most important here is this API key. So here we're going to provide the attacker's API key. And let me walk you through an entire video now to show this. Okay, so this is the attacker. There's currently no files the attacker has uploaded, but the attacker uses their own key for the exploit and will upload files to their own account. This is the victim. See, this is the past conversation that we're going to exfiltrate. We can exfiltrate any data, anything and everything the user has access to, any MCP data, anything. So uh, the attacker sent this prompt injection file 
and the user you know interacts with this file asks to summarize it and now the exploit is kicking in it starts summarizing the document as normal but then the exploitation code starts and starts interacting with the local code interpreter of that user right and what happens right now is actually behind the scene it, it downloads the anthropic uh, python library because that's going to be used to interact with the anthropic api now it actually reads the sensitive data it reads the previous conversation as the demonstration for data exfiltration so this was the message we saw in the beginning this is the entire chat and now it runs the code to basically it wrote the file into the sandbox and now it's going to upload that file to the anthropic api but it's using the attacker's api key because that was part of the prompt injection attack and so now if the attacker in their own account is refreshing the pane you can see it actually uploaded a file and uh, it took me a little bit to figure out how to actually in download the file or look at it again but the good way is to just actually integrate it into a chat conversation this is what i'm doing here i'm calling the messages api and just ask to print the contents of this file and this is run by the attacker now and this gives us the entire contents of the file that the other user had actually stored and then uploaded to the attacker's uh, anthropic account and uh, here also to expand so this is the markdown file that was stored to the sandbox code interpreter and this is the code that was written and you can see here the attacker's api key which forces claude to upload it to the wrong account i guess to the attacker's account yeah and also let me walk you through uh just screenshots as well so here you can see the attacker's anthropic account and there's currently no file uploaded in this files uh website where you can see all the uploaded files and now we switch over to the user and uh here you can see a chat conversation that just had saying hello claude please take note of the string Trust no AI, 2434, 2023. Awesome, you rock, right? It's just a regular chat conversation. And uh, this is what we're going to exfiltrate. So now we simulate the attack. So the user summarizes a document, right, from an untrusted source or, you know, connects to an MCP server, loads some data. And what happens is that this, you know, summarizes the document, but then it also actually does these tool invocations. And you can see this here. It saves the previous check conversation into the code interpreter as hello.md. And then it runs this custom Python code that will upload the chat conversation, but it will upload it to the attacker's storage account because the payload, the prompt injection payload, contained the API key of the attacker. And so here you can actually see uh, after this ran, the attacker has his hello file uploaded and then you can the attacker can access the contents of the file and we have the entire chat conversation actually exfiltrated but this is so interesting that you can access a lot of data and a lot of files and upload them really quickly this way so this is actually quite dangerous of course i responsibly disclosed this to anthropic uh on october 25th Interestingly, the ticket was closed pretty much immediately, one hour after I disclosed it with a thank you note. Uh, but this, this report is out of scope uh, because they considered it a model safety issue, which I do not agree with because this is a clearly, clearly a security vulnerability, right? That's uh, what Anthropic said so far. In the documentation, there's a big section talking about security considerations and they highlight here, right? that Claude, you know, a bad actor could add instructions to external files or websites, right? This basically is talking about this threat. And this means Claude can be tricked into sending information in its context to malicious third parties, right? And this is exactly what we did here. And uh, unfortunately, this is the default configuration. If you enable network access, so you have to be extremely careful because this appears to be possibly even by design. So there's no intention to address this problem potentially. I still want to highlight the recommendations I provided to the vendor too, which is, of course, to not allow this kind of cross-account access with the anthropic services that would prevent such an attack from occurring for this specific attack on that kind of allow listed domain from occurring. But also for users, right, and this is also highlighted in the uh, uh, documentation, be very careful when enabling network, ac network access, right, right? 
Uh, even the default option, as you saw, you know, can be used to exfiltrate data. Uh, be very, very careful. Monitor what it does, uh, especially if you operate a lot on untrusted data from like sketchy sources, so to speak. And yeah, an interesting thing also to highlight is to only give an AI always access to the tools that it actually needs, right? If you turn off memory or this past chat conversation history, you couldn't, the attacker could not steal your past chat conversation. So if you have an MCP server connected, right, that reads information from a database, the attacker could not exfiltrate the data if you have uh, that tool just not connected to the AI. So this is a very important thing. I think that we have to be very cautious always what tools we connect in a chat conversation with an AI system. With that said, uh, I want you to thank you very much. I hope this was interesting. And uh, I thought it's kind of quite fascinating how we can see like new kind of exploits and techniques show up here that I wasn't aware of before and haven't like thought through. Uh, this was sort of a first for me to see this kind of cross account access. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it and have a great day. Bye-bye.